Hey guys, today we're gonna test an M1 against an M1 Pro. Let's get into it. After the last M1 versus M1 Pro video, I actually had somebody comment and state that it would be beneficial to actually test both machines instead of just speculation. I got you. I reached out to the Luna community and found somebody to actually help me test some sessions so that we could actually do some comparison here. So let's take a look. This individual and I both ran two different tests. First, the benchmark session you saw in a prior video and the Viola Contra mix, the one that Universal Audio did with Young Guru and is actually available for you to download from the actual like load in screen from, from Luna. I took all the plugins out of that, loaded it up with some CPU focused plugins, basically made like a realistic mix and put that up for both of us to test. And we both ran these tests two times and ran them off of our local SSD. Now, before we get into it, I actually realized that I, when I did the benchmarking video in the past, I ran the session off of an external SSD instead of my local SSD. Realized that coming into doing this video. My render utilization was 80% things have changed let's first take a look at our machines head to head my m1 pro is a 10 core cpu with 32 gigs of ram and one terabyte ssd the m1 mini is an 8 core cpu 16 gigs of ram and also one terabyte now the thing to keep in mind is that there's a difference in how many performance cores we have here but i have a video if you want to check that out so you can learn more about that that breakdown there. So let's take a look at the benchmarking session. We see here we have a render, which is a CPU, and our memory, which is our RAM usage. The M1 Pro and the M1 actually on this benchmarking session over the, the average was 51 versus 68. It's a little closer than I thought it was gonna be for sure. And what's very interesting here is actually in the memory. The memory, being 15 to 63 is a huge jump between these two machines. It's actually interesting that they are even closer since the M1 Mini has half the performance cores and isn't that much of a difference, but the memory usage is much higher. So let's take a look at the other more realistic session so we can see how they compare. And we see here that the actual render for the M1 is surprisingly lower while the memory usage is pretty much the same between the two and they've both gone up just a little bit, just a hair. And so th this, is, this was really surprising to me. I don't fully like truly know, I'm not, you know, I don't work at Apple and UAD and you know, really analyze the every little details to why these would be different. But I have a theory that I'm going to get into as we look at a couple more slides. So if we next look at the overall average against the two, just so we can kind of get a feel, it really feels like the render between the two, the CPU usage is pretty even. However, between the, both uh, the uh, one sessions, it was fairly consistent. Whereas with the M1 Mini, there was a much wider variance between how low and how high it gets but that difference in the memory has stayed consistent. But yeah, that difference between the two uh, in memory is quite interesting. So let's take a look at that a little bit further. If we look at the actual RAM calculated, we'll see that the M1 Pro is only using six gigabytes of RAM, whereas the M1 is using 11 gigabytes of RAM. Something that I started to get a theory on after looking at this made me think about the speed of the drives themselves, that one terabyte drive that we both have. So I went back to the individual and asked them to run a Blackmagic speed test. And here's the results. We'll see that the M1 Pro is coming in an average about 5300 to 5200 between read and write, whereas the M1 was coming at about 3000 to 2800. So, you know, that's a pretty significant difference. And this kind of led me to a theory that you know, don't take this for verbatim as, as fact because I'm only guessing here. One of my thoughts is that potentially with the drive being a little bit slower and the combination of having less performance cores, maybe the actual the M1 chip is being intelligent in loading more into memory to help balance out what those four cores are able to do. Whereas the M1 Pro, since it has four more, just throws more of that into the CPU 
and it knows because the SSD is so fast that it's going to be able to get stuff in and out much quicker when it needs to. Uh, as well, they probably have a difference in their cache. The, the main difference here is it's going to come down to as the task gets more intensive, it may use more RAM and it may get to a point where it runs out of RAM, has to put more back into the CPU and vice versa, depending on what it is doing. For somebody's asking the question, which direction would I go? My answer still remains the same as it did in the last video. If you are somebody who where you're in a more professional setting and you want to be assured that whatever you throw at it, it'll be able to handle it. You don't know if one day you're going to load up 300 tracks with 50 sampled instruments and you know, a whole lot's going to be happening. You may want to go the M1 Pro, the M1 Max to ensure you have more ability to handle that situation. However, if you're working on smaller sessions um, or somebody who's doing this more from a personal project perspective, yeah, I would say the M1 is going to solve your problems. It's going to hit your needs. Overall, this has been really interesting and uh, it's led me to think that, you know what, I may even want to reach out to more people who have M1s, M1 Pros, and M1 Maxes to run these tests a little bit more and see how consistent or inconsistent our results are. If you're somebody who has one of those devices and you would like to run that test with me, please leave me a comment and let me know that. If there's anything you think I should add into these tests, even if you don't have the device, let me know that as well. And otherwise, have yourself a good day.